Green Rosetta has wanted to ask, any faux pas when receiving on the tongue? Any tips to us receiving on the tongue to make it easier for the priest? Don't say amen. I, I repeat, you do <laughs> not say <laughs> amen. <laughs> well, I mean, first of all, it's not in the rubrics. You know, that's, um, I don't I want to criticize other masses, but in the traditional Latin mass, it is not prescribed, um, and therefore it is not done. The communicant simply receives in silence because, for example, if the priest is trying to place the host on your tongue and then all of a sudden your lips are moving, saying, amen, that, you know, that can make hosts, that, that can seriously disrupt the, the process of placing down the host on the communicant's tongue. Also, don't make the sign of the cross after receiving Holy Communion. You want to know why? It's not because we're against piety. It's because your hand making the sign of the cross, what does it do to the communion pattern that's right above your hand? It knocks the, the communion pattern, which can send consecrated particles flying. And also, more, moreover, you know, you've just received the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings into your very body and soul, you know, making it like doing a personal devotion, like a sign of the cross at that point is really unnecessary. You know, don't get me wrong, the sign of the cross, we should make it frequently, treasured sacramental, the sign of the cross, but that's not the moment to do it. You know, simply receive communion is what you have to do at that moment. Please, please, please open your mouth and stick out your tongue. You know, there are people, plenty of people who do the, what I call the coin slot, they do you know, kind of, kind of like that. They just keep their 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 mouth slightly open and mm -hmm. and expect the priest to like like jam his fingers in there. No, you have to open your mouth and stick out your tongue so that it's your tongue is extending at least a little bit over your lower lip. Don't don't lean your head back. Don't lean it way forward. Just keep your head basically level. Don't uh, don't chew the host after receiving Holy Communion because you don't want to leave consecrated particles lodged between your teeth. Let the saliva in your mouth dissolve those naturally and swallow, swallow the host when it becomes moist. I mentioned the, the coin slot, you know, those who don't open their mouth and stick out their tongue, but there's also people who might like to sometimes refer to as the, the reptile. They just sort of stick out their tongue and then withdraw it really quickly. <laughs> that's that's also really, it makes, it makes placing the host on your tongue really complicated. It just, you know, you um, you don't want to be moving your tongue around. Uh, try not to be too nervous. Some people are like shaking when they're receiving Holy Communion, and maybe that's kind of beyond their control. But, you know, uh, so as a priest, I try to be accommodating. I try to be understanding too, I admit. But, you know, I see all these, I do see a lot of faux pas, which oftentimes um, makes distribution of Holy Communion kind of complicated. I will say, as a credit to American Catholics who go to the traditional Latin Mass on a regular basis, I do think that many American Catholics are better at it than a lot of Catholics in, in Europe. I was just at the Sharp Pilgrimage, as I mentioned, and I was distributing communion a lot, you know, at the Masses in addition to hearing confessions. And yeah, there's a lot of Catholics from other parts of the world who uh, they didn't really look like Americans. You know, they look like more European, for example, perhaps perhaps French, I'm not, I'm not sure, but who... Yeah, they weren't really opening their mouth and sticking out their tongue a lot. It made it very difficult. And obviously the priest understands that it's disagreeable for you. It's unpleasant for you to, for the communicant to have the priest's fingers jammed into your mouth. It's also unpleasant for the priest to have to jam his fingers into someone's mouth. Priests don't, it's not, priests aren't doing that because they enjoy it. No, it's the last place they want their fingers is inside of your mouth. So <laughs> you need to open your mouth and stick out your tongue, uh, not say amen before. Pardon me, I know I got up, got up uh, on my soapbox and made this entire segment about <laughs> the do's and don'ts of Holy Communion, but these are things that have been on my mind for some time. <laughs> Daniel, our producer, <laughs> chimed in. He says, hey, I've heard that eyes closed is another one. Uh, Eyes closed is it's better than looking up at the priest. You got a lot of little kids who like uh, not necessarily a lot, but some little kids and not only kids, sometimes adults who like are you know, staring up at the priest like, you know, this is the like they're about to be knighted or something like that. I, I don't know. Or, you know, the priest they are about to have some sort of communication, some sort of revelation from the priest. They're like looking, staring him in the eyes. No, this is not the thing to do. I mean, I, I, you don't, you don't. You don't want to be looking at the priest. You do not want to be looking at the priest during Holy Communion. I mean, if your eyes are closed, it's, it's a lot better than like you know, uh, having this sort of like deer in the headlights <laughs> gaze right right into the eyes of the priest. The moment of Holy Communion. It's not the moment. Not the moment to be doing that. <laughs> Is that at the on you say I noticed that the servers flip over the communion rail a certain cloth. What is the meaning of that cloth? And if there's a meaning, do I put my hands under it or above it? 
there's a very practical need actually for that white communion the cloth is to catch a falling host should ever a consecrated host fall from uh, for example the priest's fingers or the tongue of the the communicant or if it should fall off the communion patent being held by the server or if it you know is falls perhaps falls from the priest's fingers and the server isn't quick enough and he misses it with a patent that or silver patent that he's holding. And all these things that I'm describing are not just hypotheticals. I've had all of these things happen or times that I would have liked. I mean, even once is kind of unfortunate, but then it's been, you know, more than once. Unfortunately, sometimes it's my fault. Other times it's, you know, say the servers were perhaps a little <laughs> fatigued that, that day, or sometimes it's not really anyone, anyone's fault. It might just be the hosts are because of the time of time of year, um, you know, it's warmer, more humid temperatures, sweat on the priest's fingers can cause, you know, the host to stick when it shouldn't, uh, for example, and then it'll you know, be kind of awkward at the moment of actually trying to place it on the tongue of the communicant. So long story short, hosts can and do fall. And that white cloth is there to catch it if that happens so that the host doesn't fall all the way to the floor. And you should not put your hands over the cloth, but rather underneath it. And you should form a little plateau with your um, hands, like so, underneath the uh, white cloth, the white communion cloth, so that if the host falls, it falls onto a nice, flat, even surface that the priest can easily retrieve the host from and then place it onto the communicant's tongue.